Hare Krishna. So today we will try to understand this aspect of is there a need for temples in the world today? Because often times we hear arguments saying, oh God is everywhere, why do we need a temple? Or sometimes we hear people saying, oh I have a temple in my house, I don't need to go anywhere else. Or sometimes we hear certain moralists also presenting arguments like what is the use of temples? Better we invest all this money in social service, right? While each of these arguments have some element of truth to it, if not understood right, they can mislead people. And we see unfortunately this happening today. So let us try to take all these three arguments and try to systematically deconstruct them, right? So the first argument being raised is, if God is everywhere, why do we need temples? Well, the scriptures explain that yes, God has his divine presence in each and every living entity, in each and every aspect of creation. But at the same time, the scriptures also explain that God is also a person and he has this unique form that we need to worship. Think of it this way, water is everywhere, then why do I need a tap to access the water to drink? Electricity is everywhere, why do I need a socket to actually plug into to charge my devices? The mobile network is everywhere, why do I need a mobile phone to actually access this energy for communication? So just as we see that how everything around us needs some access point likewise in order to access the mercy of God we need an access point and that access point are the temples right because oftentimes people say then why do we no need to go to these famous shrines I have my temple at home let me do my puja at home well, that is good, that is very noteworthy, right? But imagine, why do people go to movie theatres to experience the movie? You can very well sit in, your, in, in the comfort of your home, watch it in your, in your tablet or in your, in your phone, right? Will you get the same experience as watching it in the company of all the fans, watching it in that serene ambience which, which the, which the theatre creates, right? So likewise, temples create that ambience for increasing the devotional sentiments in the heart of the visitors. Mind you, these temples are not just ordinary structures. These temples, by the intense practice of the devotees who visit there, are surcharged with spiritual energy and just by coming in the ambience of the temples the devotees automatically get surcharged by those spiritual vibrations and in that ambience when one engages in a certain practice then one can experience what these spiritual transformations can give about. And the last and the final argument, which is a very popular argument about social service versus service to God. Well, I am sure each and every one of you are ready with your arsenals to counter the various arguments, right? But let's try to understand this. Yes, we are not undermining the need for social service. In fact, temples traditionally have been those places where people can re come and selflessly render service. We can still see this culture in many places of worship, whether be it in, in various temples, in the mosque or in the, in, the, in the various gurudwaras, where you see ardent devotees and practitioners coming there wanting to render some selfless service. In fact, which other public place in the world 
do you see this level of selfless service taking place which other public place in the world do you actually see the needy people coming knowing that they are going to get some help do you see uh, beggars standing in in the long queues outside movie theaters waiting for people after coming watching the movie to give them some food or some money do you see beggars and needy people sitting outside uh, you know uh, government offices or any kind of uh, social centers the reason why these needy people come near places of worship is because they know that people here like to render service so the point is that yes we need places like temples along with the worship because they also create this mood of selflessness any true religion is one that extends this spirit of service towards god to the entire creation of god whether be it the people whether be it the animals or even to the plants and insects that is the hallmark of any true religion because when a person comes closer to god one automatically comes closer to the rest of his creation and that is the beauty of places of pilgrimage not only do they induce devotion to god but they induce that sense of service and respect to everybody in this creation and that is the true holistic way of inducing this mood of service right definitely we are not here in favor of the religious fanaticism that is going on today under the pretext of religion or devotion but here we are talking about real devotion which is based in the right teachings of the scriptures and through the teachings of the enlightened masters so i encourage all of you to experience this true understanding of religion and spirituality and see the transformation of the service attitude that you will all experience hari krishna